unprecedented case. Joining us now is Mary Mueller, the mother of Eli, who was wounded and survived the shooting, and Sarah Rogerson, who is Eli's aunt and a professor of law at the Albany Law School. Thank you both for your time this morning. Um, I imagine with this sentencing bringing up a lot of raw emotions for you. Mary, uh, first, what are you expecting out of this sentencing today? What emotions are you wrestling with today? Um, I don't know what I'm really expecting out of it. It's kind of um, up in the air. I, I definitely appreciate what the prosecutor is trying to do, and it uh, offers a small amount of healing for our family. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards the more uh, severe consequence, um, but I'm pretty biased. Mm. As, as one would expect you would be, quite frankly. Sarah, I'm wondering how you're feeling uh, on this morning. Yeah, you know, I have um, a bit of a different take, but my sister and I talk about this a lot. Um, I hope that this serves as a deterrent effect and as an incentive to parents to, who are gun owners to think more carefully about their firearm storage if they haven't already. But we know that deterrence is an incomplete remedy and I don't think that anyone in our family is feeling good about um, the outcome of this trial being an end all and be all of our story and of our experience. The law can only do so much and it's going to take a full community approach and additional supports uh, and additional recommendations in order to solve the systemic issues that led to this outcome. Mary, what does uh, justice look like for you? The, the harshest penalty here do you think that there's any way for justice to be served in such a horrific case like this? No, it's all tragic and sad and horrible. And um, my son Eli has said this from the beginning, that um, it's good to know that there is uh, the law in place and people can be held accountable to it, but people are still impacted by this and it doesn't actually make the impact of what happened easier. Mm. And Sarah, the reason this case is, has made national headlines is obviously it's a school shooting it's in, in which students were gunned down in, in class. It's horrific. Um, but in a long history of school shootings in this country, um, you know, this was not one of, of, of the deadliest, not, not even close. The issue here legally was how accountable should parents be held for the actions of their kids when that kid, for whatever reason, shoots up a school. This is a particularly tough case because there were a lot of red flags um, and a lot of questionable actions by the parents, which is why they're going to get a sentence today. But I'm wondering in the broad picture that the, that the fact this case sends the message that yes, parents can be held accountable and may even spend time in jail, more than likely will. Is that a message America needs and you think will have an impact on a problem that we can never seem to solve? Well, I guess we'll see, but I think the bigger thing in the effort that my sister and I have been working really hard on um, side by side with law enforcement officers and others is to really encourage um, education, parental education around safe storage. Um, there are programs out there like the Be Smart program that's promoted by Everytown um, and Moms Demand Action, which is a fantastic program that really is peer-to-peer -peer accountability in terms of parents. We need to be having conversations. If your kid is spending the night at somebody else's house, it should be perfectly okay to ask, are there firearms and are they secure? That's something that my sister and I now make a, a regular part of, of our routine as parents and getting other parents more comfortable with that. In our polarized, politically divided country, I think we really need to have straight talk, parent to parent, peer to peer. Um, there are a lot of great programs happening in Oxford, peer education programs um, for the kids, but parents need to be engaged in that as well in terms of educating each other. We need to invest more in social emotional learning for our kids and our public school system. Um, and we really need an all community approach on threat assessment, which is a multidisciplinary approach to keeping um, not just school violence, but school violence is within this broader umbrella of community gun violence generally. School shootings are actually a pretty small percentage of the amount of lives that are taken, children's lives that are taken by firearms every single year. And so 
a lot, a, a greater percentage is actually due to suicide, gun involved suicide. So um, we really have to take a whole community approach and that's gonna take whole community involvement. You're touching on this, uh, you know, what prosecutors are saying that the crumbly parents, uh, they said the handgun was not secure, that they ignored the warnings, uh, signs of their child. Um, one of the things that was really striking was the testimony from Jennifer Crumbly, who was asked about regrets, remorse, and she said, I've asked myself if I would have done anything differently, and I wouldn't have. She said on the stand, I wish he would have killed us instead. Mary, if you could sit down with Jennifer Crumbly, for one, would you want to? And two, would you have any words for her? Um. I'm pretty open to sitting down with anybody involved in this situation and having candid conversation because it could maybe lead to some way to prevent it. Um, I empathize with her position. I'm not sure what I would do in, in her position. None of us can say, but I know for sure I would have regretted allowing firearms in my home and I would have regretted not getting him any kind of mental health supports. Right. Uh, so. I wouldn't, I don't uh, condemn her for her thoughts on this. Um, I don't think killing the parents would be a great option either. Um, I think she's trying to express maybe a small amount of remorse that she doesn't, uh, she's sad about the impact on some families. Um, I'm not sure she understands uh, the entire impact. And just real quick, and just in 10 seconds, I'll keep it with you for a second, uh, Mary. Again, that same question about. Mm -hmm you support the idea that parents should be held accountable when, when their children are accused of something horrific like this? In this case, yes. If, if there are so many signs that your child needs help and um, you're ignoring them or not acting upon them, I, I think there should be some accountability on the parents, for sure. I'm also in the public school systems as a teacher, so my perspective is uh, from that line of thinking as well. I see failures of parents multiple times in um, a day, uh, and it would maybe hopefully deter some parents from not paying attention. Mary Mueller and Sarah Rogerson, thank you both for coming on uh, and being so raw with us. I, I, I can't imagine what you guys are going through right now in this just horrific shooting and dealing with these emotions again. So thank you both for coming on our show this morning. Morning Rush, we'll be back right after this.